So good evening. We are back to the study of the Spirit's book. Um, we are on question 265. Uh, we are in the item called Choice of Trials. That is on, um, on chapter 6 of book 2. Oh. Uh, we went last week, just a, a quick reminder, uh, we, were dis we are discussing how spirits that go back to the spiritual world um, have the ability or not to choose uh, their, on their new reincarnation, the trials they have to go through, the atonements, and again, trials are challenges that uh, will serve for us to progress but not a consequence of our past actions. Atonements are a consequence of our past actions that we have to uh, make repairs. So we discussed a little bit uh, about uh, the, the options that the spirits have, and we are going to continue uh, on question 265. Philip, you read for us. While some spirits choose to expose themselves to vice to test their virtue, could others have a similar choice simply because they want to live immersed in their immoral tastes, completely free to yield to their sensual tendencies? Of course this occurs, but only among people whose moral sense is imperfectly developed. In such cases, the required trial occurs spontaneously and they are subjected to it for a longer period of time. Sooner or later, they understand that indulging in animal instincts leads to disastrous consequences, which they undergo during a period so long that it seems to be eternal. God sometimes leaves them in this state until they have fully grasped the gravity of their flaws and ask to be allowed to repair it by undergoing beneficial trials. Okay, so uh, we discussed sp about spirits choosing to expose themselves uh, to difficult situations to test uh, what they have learned in the spiritual world because we, we try to learn in the spiritual world and try to overcome our, our imperfections, but only coming to a new reincarnation and facing the challenges or being tempted uh, to, to the imperfections that we have, that is how we know that we really over, overcame our imperfections. And here, the spirit, uh, Kardec is asking the spirits if uh, spirits can make similar choice because they want to, to, uh, to work, not to work, but to, to, uh, to immerse in their uh, immoral tastes, er, as they say. And um, one thing here is important. This type of spirits, uh, they are unlikely to choose their reincarnation, they plan for their reincarnation, because they are in no condition of making such choices. They are only inter interested in, uh, in their inferior tendencies, in act on their inferior tendencies. So if they are uh, acting on their inferior tendencies here and there, they are not um, in any condition of being uh, participating in their uh, in reincarnation plan. So that's why the spirit says, say here, the required trial occurs spontaneously. So it follows the natural process, the natural law of reincarnation. We have to reincarnate and they will come again uh, with the, again, we always, come with the best opportunity for us to progress. So the, the guiding spirits and the spirits that are in charge of the reincarnation plan of these spirits, they know that it is very likely that they will come and they will fall to on, on their imperfections. But even so, there are always small opportunities for them to learn and to progress, maybe making the mistake once again will be the final straw for them to finally uh, understand that that's not the right path. So that's why, you know, the, the reincarnation is always follows the, the, the planning on the spiritual world, but the spirit 
um, may not be part of the reincarnation plan. We talked about this last week. If uh, someone does not believe in reincarnation, of course, they're not going to be participating in the reincarnation plan because they don't even think that they are going to reincarnate. But one thing also that the spirits say here, they are subjected to it for a longer period of time. Again, how long depends on the spirit, of course. The spirit needs to make a choice uh, to make the change. If they don't make the choice, then the, this keeps dragging on and on and on. And sometimes we read about these spirits that come, reincarnate and commit mistakes in, on top of mistakes they, they made in previous incarnations. And uh, it makes it very difficult for them to... Uh, to overcome their imperfections. But again, the law is of progress. Uh, we sometimes forget right, that the law is of progress. So we see these spirits coming and, uh, and making so many mistakes and um, we look at them and say, how, how are they progressing? How are they progressing, right? It's just that we don't know the past. So if they are like this now, they were even worse before. And also... The progress is very slow. So someone that is uh, uh, focused on causing harm to others is probably someone that was the same in the previous incarnation. Uh, until when this goes? Until it reaches a point where enough is enough. And again, the natural law is a law of cause and consequence. And uh, whatever they have done reaches a point that they need to come with an incarnation where they will be unable to act on their inferior tendencies or uh, because of physical limitations. can be um, mentally challenged, can be physically challenged. These are tri uh, uh, atonements for spirits that abused of uh, their lives in many lives. It's not one life, you know, you 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 had a bad life because you had you were in a in a difficult family you 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 know you fought with the whole family you left the, the this life with a lot of hatred but this does not cause you to come with a with a physically challenged uh, body it's just an accumulation of mistakes on mistakes on mistakes on mistakes it reaches a point that enough is enough and then the natural law, and again, it's not uh, God's punishment. It's the natural law that causes you to come. The spirits will choose an incarnation where you come severely uh, limited on your ability to cause harm to yourself and to others. Uh, and gives an opportunity for, for those that eventually will take care of you to repair their own um, issues and to exercise charity patience love doesn't mean that they will succeed a lot of times we have these uh, individuals that uh, come with uh, with uh, limited abilities and are left on their own you know in institutions and uh, other places uh, this is a consequence sometimes of the lack of uh, care for the from the people that should take care of them. Sometimes it's even uh, a, an accumulation of another uh, atonement on top of the atonement. They are, the, yes, besides being limited, they are placed in a, where, somewhere that they are going to have limited love. That's the sense. So, but these are extreme cases and this doesn't happen often. That's what's really important for us to understand here. This is, you know, someone that has been doing, uh, causing harm to others for hundreds and hundreds of years, several incarnations. It reaches a point that uh, uh, Divaldo has a book that talk, talks about uh, the reincarnation of the Marquis of, of Sade, Said, Sade, I don't know how to say in English, Marquis de Sade the French noble that was, uh, you know, the, the origin of the word sa sa sadism, sadism, sadism. Marquis de Sade. Marquis, yes, Marquis de Sade. Yes, 
he reincarnated uh, in Brazil, uh, completely physically and mentally uh, unable to to manifest himself. Uh, and he discarnated very early with uh, probably around eight, nine years old. Um, there is a book by Divaldo that talks about him. So you see uh, the life, if you read about his life, what uh, the, the, the damage that he caused in that incarnation, um, sometimes only an incarnation like the one he had is, is uh, the, the one that can repair uh, so much damage that he did to himself and to others. Uh, but again, we are talking here the exception of the exception, okay? That's not the, the normal case is, you know, you come to in a difficult incarnation, born in a difficult family, born in a difficult uh, life situation with all your abilities, but uh, with all the challenges that uh, will make you uh, have to fight hard for your survival and may allow you to learn something and uh, evolve a little bit to allow you to have a better next incarnation. And again, we have to remember we have thousands of reincarnations. So one reincarnation is really uh, nothing. Right, Paco? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 266. Yes. <clears throat> it's off the page. Is it not natural to choose the least painful trials? From your point of view, it would seem so, but not from the, that of the spirit. When it is free from the bonds of material existence, its illusions come to it, come to an end, and it thinks differently. While living on earth and subject to the influence of physical ideas, human beings only see the painful aspect of the trials they must suffer. It therefore appears natural to them to choose the trials that are associated with material pleasure. When it returns to the spiritual life, it compares the unrefined and fleeting joy with the permanent happiness it occasionally catches a glimpse of, and then of what importance to the spirit are a few temporary hardships. A spirit may therefore choose the hardest trial and the most painful existence in hopes of reaching a happier state quicker, just as a sick person often chooses the most unpleasant medicine or course of treatment in hopes of attaining a rapid cure. A person who seeks to leave behind an eternal legacy by discovering an unknown country does not pursue a smooth course. It takes the road that most likely will help it reach its goal and dangers that may lie ahead do not deter it. Quite the contrary, it braves those dangers with the sake, for the sake of the glory it will receive if it succeeds. The fact that, <clears throat> the fact that we are free to choose our successive lives and the trials that we have to undergo ceases to appear strange when we consider that spirits being free from matter judge things differently. <clears throat> they perceive the ends that these trials are intended to meet, which are far more important than the fleeting gratifications found on earth. After each existence, they see the steps they have already accomplished and understand what they still need to do to reach the purity and this clarity of vision helps them reach their goals. That is the reason why they willingly submit to the tribulations of physical life, requesting to be allowed to experience those that will aid them in advancing the farthest and the fastest. Considering all this, there is nothing surprising in a spirit choosing a hard or painful life. It knows that it cannot enjoy the supreme happiness it craves in its present state of imperfection. It catches glimpses of that happiness and it tries to earn its own improvement as the sole means of reaching that happiness. 
Don't we see examples of similar choices every day? Individuals working tirelessly to amass the wealth that will enable them to live in comfort. They are carrying out tasks that have been voluntarily assumed as the means of ensuring a more prosperous future. The soldier who sacrifices for the accomplishment of a perilous mission, the traveler who braves serious danger in the interests of science, or their own fortune. These are examples of voluntary hardships taken on for the sake of the honor or profit that will result from their successful resolution. What will people do for glory? Is not every sort of competitive examination a trial to which people voluntarily submit in the hope of advancing in the career they have chosen? To reach a high position in science, art, or industry, a person must pass through all the lower degrees that lead up to it, and these constitute many trials. Spirit life models physical life, and it presents the same variation on a smaller scale. As, a, as in human life, we often choose the hardest conditions as a means of attaining the highest ends. Why would a discarnate spirit who sees farther than it did when it was in a physical body not choose a hard or painful existence if it may lead to eternal happiness? Those who believe that spiritus, spirits will request to be princes and millionaires because they have the power to choose their lives are like the short-sighted who only see what they touch, or like greedy children who say that they would like to be pastry chefs or candy makers. A spirit, while incarnate, is like a traveler who sees neither the length nor the end of its road in the depths of a valley obscured by fog. When he has reached the top of the hill and the fog has cleared, his view comprises both the road he has traveled and that which still remains. He sees the point that he has to reach and the obstacles that he has to overcome in reaching it. And he is able to take measures that for successfully accomplishing his journey. A spirit while incarnated is like the traveler at the foot of the hill when freed from his earthbound shackles. It is like the traveler who has reached the top of the hill. The aim of the traveler is to obtain rest after getting tired, while the aim of the spirit is to attain perfect happiness after experiencing trials and tribulations. Errant spirits say that they seek, study, and observe to choose wisely. We see similar examples in corporal life. We often spend years deciding which career to choose, a decision that we freely make, because we consider it to be the one in which we are most likely to succeed. If we ultimately fail in the one we have chosen, we seek out another, and each career constitutes a phase or period of our lives. It is not each day used by us to decide what we will do tomorrow. What do different physical lives mean for a spirit if, it, if not simply transitional phases, periods, and days in comparison to its spirit life, which is its normal life? The corporal life is nothing more than transitory and temporary. Very long explanation by Kardec. Uh, this is, you know, the, the answer from the spirits is a short one. Um, and the question for Kardec is not natural to choose the least painful trials, right? So we, at our stage of evolution, we tend to choose the path of least resistance, right? That's natural for us. Uh, and uh, and as the spirit says, from our point of view, it makes sense. But when we look from the spiritual world, for those that reach a cer certain level of evolution, and we are looking at our journey back in the spiritual world, um, 
we see that uh, if we don't challenge ourselves, we are going to make very little or no progress. And, uh, and again, Kardec compares to us in the physical life, right? If you want to, uh, to become a doctor to study medicine, right? You know, that is a long journey, six years plus two years plus residence. Uh, but if you want to achieve it, you have to go through it, right? It's a challenge, but you have to do it. Now imagine with this is with our uh, limitation of the physical life and our lack of understanding of much more. Now, thinking of us back in the spiritual world with the same ability, you know, uh, 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 an evolved spirit that is able to understand their journey, past, future, necessities, understanding about ourselves. When we look at the opportunities and the challenges, what the spirit says is normally we we tend to choose even more than we can handle and the spirits are the one that tells us you, you know, know go easy go easy yeah because when we have glimpses of more uh, elevated worlds more perfect worlds or more illuminated spirits we read about them you know in the books of andrea Luiz and uh, manuel Filomeno de miranda for instance when these uh, mentors come with all the light, with all this, um, this uh, we see how overwhelmed those that are watching these spirits talk. You know, of course you want to get there, right? We are all going to get there. The speed to which we are going to get there depends on each one of us. So when we look at that and we have that experience, you imagine Andrea Luis going through all he went in the spiritual world, telling all the stories he told and uh, looking at his challenges. Don't you think that he would come to a, an incarnation that he has overcome many of these difficulties that he still has to deal with? So it's, it's, we have a different vision when we are in the spiritual world. But again, to a certain level of spirits and cer certain involvement of the spirits, right? Spirits that are not interested in progressing here because they think that this is only life or, you know, like uh, some, I heard people saying, well, if I have eternity ahead of me, why hurry? I have all the time in the, in, in the world, right? So why don't enjoy now and leave it for later? And again, it's a choice, and uh, this choice is a short-term reward for a long-term difficulty, unfortunately. That. Yeah, that's the price, right? You enjoy the short-term, but you are compromising the long-term. Uh, but there are many that, that do this. But uh, once you reach a certain level of evolution, uh, you, you cannot stop. Right, I was uh, I was reading something that uh, I th I think was Raúl Teixeira that said right, uh, giving an example. Once you learn how to read, you cannot unlearn how to read. Everything that comes in front of you, you are going to read because it's part of who you are, right? So the spirits that reach a certain level of evolution, they cannot go back. It's not in them to go back or to to drag their evolution. They want to move faster. They want to achieve more in their incarnation. So they challenge themselves to uh, more difficult incarnations. How, you, how you can you differentiate looking at two people going through the same difficulties? The one that face it with acceptance and resignation. You know, it's not sitting and uh, saying, well, there's nothing I can do. You fight to overcome the difficulties, but you accept that sometimes you cannot. It's the resignation and acceptance are the signs of the spirit that is facing the trial or atonement and progress. Those that uh, revolt, you know, try to fight all the difficult things, blame everyone else except themselves for all the problems that they have. These are spirits that... Uh, are not yet in, in the condition of uh, being 
learning fast. They are learning, but not as fast as they could because they are uh, fighting against the the learning. Right? Is when you 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 know you, you have to study for a test and then for the next day, and then you know you have the the whole night. So let me watch this TV program a little bit that I, I cannot miss. I'm hungry now. And then you go, and then when it's one hour left, you try to rush through the pages. Don't we all went through that in <laughs> one, 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 one class or another, yeah. right? And then in the end, you know, the, the, the best teacher I ever had in my life, he used to say, the good student, the day before the test, go to the movies because they don't need to study. They know everything. So they study throughout the classes. When they, they're ready for the test, they can go to the movies. Did they, anyone ever went to the movies the night before a test? Only if I had not studied and didn't care. Then? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Next. 267. Can a spirit make its choice while in the physical state? Its, its desire may have a certain amount of influence depending on its intention, but it often views things very differently when it returns to the spiritual life. It is only a, as a spirit that it chooses. However, some decisions may be made during the material life because a spirit, even while incarnated, has occasional moments in which it is independent of the matter that it inhabits. Are there many cases where people desire greatness and wealth on earth, but not as atonement or a trial? Absolutely. In such cases, it is their material instinct that desires to enjoy material greatness. The spirit could only want it to understand its fluctuations. Okay. Um, the question by Kardec, if we can make choices while we are still in a physical life, we are actually making choices every day, right? Uh, with every act we have on our uh, physical lives, we are creating consequences and we are creating um what the future will be right the we cannot do anything about the past we cannot change the future but we can change our present every day and by changing our present we create the future now in terms of choosing our challenges of our next incarnation um as they say here yes the desire may have a certain amount of influence depending on the intention. But often we view things differently when we go back to the spiritual world, right? I heard someone saying, a speaker saying uh, this week that uh, he wants to reincarnate in uh, in Gaza, next incarnation, so he can uh, learn how to, you know, help there and uh, educate those that uh, have different beliefs, different faiths. And, uh, and I was thinking, you know, what? He may want that now, but when he goes back to the spiritual world, he may view things differently. Exactly like what they say here, right? Um, so, and again, um, when we are when we are trying to make choices here, which are positive choices, you know, I want to be reincarnated next life uh, with my, you know, my brother or my sister again because of. I haven't been able to solve the issues this incarnation. I want to come again. We're trying to build. Uh, yes, there is an influence on what uh, we we can do. But if we are willing to come back as the you know as as the the king of England or the queen of uh, of Sweden, it's a different story, right? This is based on uh, material instinct, as they say here, which does not mean that we cannot, right? Because if, 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 if it is an experience that is going to help us in some way, positively help us and help those around us, it is everything is possible, right? Someone has to be born. 
the heirs of of the kings and queens, right? So now, if if you are going to to choose, you may want to learn more about their lives before choosing, because you read sometimes. I was reading, you know, about the the daughter of Elvis Presley, right? How miserable she was during her whole, whole life. Do you really want to come as mm. someone that uh, that important? Uh, you know, be careful what we you wish for, right? So, but yes, we can influence our future incarnations by our actions and um, think about what we want, because the first step towards achieving something is the desire right so yeah, you know if you want to be reincarnated next life in australia there when anton lives because it's uh it's summer all year there almost you know it, the first step is to wish to right when i was in the symposium there there is this uh director of a spirit center in uh, maui hawaii and I used to, you know, I, I told him when I, when I become a more perfect spirit, I will reincarnate in Hawaii to open a spirit center there. <laughs> For the moment, not possible. Um, but again, you know, uh, it's very easy to, to talk about others when we are not living their lives, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but yes, we can make our, our, uh, we can start building on our future every day in our present lives. Okay. 268. Yep. Until a spirit has reached the state of perfect purity, must it constantly undergo trials? Yes, but not as you understand it. By trials, you only mean material misfortunes. When a spirit has reached a certain degree of purification, it has no more hardships of that kind to undergo, although it is not perfect yet. Nevertheless, it must perform certain duties to continue to improve. There is nothing painful in these duties, for example, the duty of helping others improve themselves. Okay, so... Um... We reach perfection when we become pure spirits, perfect spirits, when we achieve the highest level of moral evolution uh, and intellectual evolution. Of course, the progress is, is, is constant, so we are never going to stop progressing, even if we cannot understand what does it mean to progress as a perfect spirit, right? Because if we reach perf moral perfection, what is more to achieve? Again, we can all, yeah, beyond our capabilities, ability to understand. But we can understand somehow how trials will become less and less uh, difficult for us, right? Because um, there is a famous phrase, right? When you when you do what you like, you don't have to work a single day in your life. For people that do what they like, it, it's always a pleasure, right, to work. It has the difficulties. All trials have difficulties. It's, the, it's a trial, right? But if you do it because you really like, right, uh, studying things that you really enjoy studying, it's not uh, not doing anything, which is, you know, lay, uh, looking at the at a TV without thinking. You are making an effort, but it's a pleasure effort. It's something that uh, you like to do it. You are doing because you like. That's more or less not really because we don't understand what it is a, a trial in a more, more advanced world, but that is a, an idea of what it should be a trial in a more evolved place. It's something that uh, it doesn't cause us pain, suffering it, it's work but it's a pleasurable work so i think that's the comparison that they were trying to do here uh, for us to understand okay 
to 69? Yes. Is it possible for a spirit to make a mistake with respect to the value of the trial it chooses? It may choose one that exceeds its strength, and in that case, it fails. Alternately, it may choose one from which it will reap no profit at all. For instance, if it seeks to lead an idle and useless life, but in such cases, when it returns to the spiritual world, it realizes that it has gained nothing and asks to make up for lost time. Okay, so yes, it's possible for us. We are imperfect spirits, so we are prone to make mistakes, right? And uh, if we are uh, participating in our reincarnation planning, uh, we, we said we are going to ask for more than we can, we can deal with most likely, because we want to overcome as much as possible. Our spiritual guides will try to convince us that it's too much, but we have free will. So in the end, if we decide to come to, to face all the challenges we think we can deal with, we will. And most likely, we'll fail. They know better than us, right? Uh, that's what they are, they are talking here. We, we can make a mistake. It's not a, 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 an intentional mistake. It's a mistake trying to embrace more, you know, than we can deal with. And again, we make those mistakes in our physical lives, right? Sometimes you, you know, enroll yourself in a course and say, oh, no, I'll, I'm going to have time and uh, I'm not going to have, get distracted. And then, you know, after doing two, three months of the course, you see that, you are failing in the course and everything around it. You did it with good intentions, right? So it happens. It can happen the same thing in our reincarnation. We can try to, to deal with more than we can deal. And the spirits will allow us because we learn. We learn from mistakes, right? And at our level of evolution, uh, when we are already making an effort, and that's why we're here studying and trying to learn more about uh, ourselves and uh, and life and life, um, we are going to learn from our mistakes more effectively than when we are just uh, repeating mistakes that we did uh, before because we haven't learned anything. Right um, at this stage of evolution, uh, with our knowledge. There are some mistakes that we make on our daily lives that we know better. And we make the mistakes and we look at ourselves and we, we think, wow, I knew. I knew better and still I made a mistake, right? Which is a sign of progress because there are those that make mistakes, repeat, and are proud of the mistakes they make, right? I am, you know, I... I, how many people you hear saying that, uh, you know, I'm like that, I'm never going to change. So they are proud of their, uh, their imperfections. Now, when you reach a point that you make mistakes, you look at them, you regret, you know that you ha should have done better, but you recognize the mistake is a sign of progress. And we have to uh, acknowledge this for ourselves, that we are on the path of progress. Maybe we we will be able to avoid next time or uh, make less mistakes, right? So that's the path, path of evolution. At, at, our, at our level as imperfect spirits is making mistakes, learning from them. And uh, when we do the mistakes for the first time, when we learn from them, there's no karma. When we repeat the mistake is when we create a karma and uh, we have the tendency of repeating our mistakes until we uh, get tired of making them all over and over again. Okay. 270. <clears throat> Why do some people have vocations and a spontaneous desire to follow one career over another? It seems to me that you could answer this question yourself. Is not that the existence of such vocations a consequence of what we have told you concerning the choice of trials and the progress accomplished in a prior existence? Yeah. <clears throat> question uh, Kardec asks uh, the spirits uh, 
give a, an answer saying, you, you know yourself, you shouldn't be asking this question. You know the answer yourself, right? Again, uh, we study a little bit about this, right? Uh, some people come with, uh, with the abilities uh, to do something and the desire to follow that path, right? Um, I recently met a, uh, a, young, a young man. Uh, he's probably around 25, 26. He's a musician. From the day that he was uh, ready to think, he wanted to be a musician in his life. He always loved music and his classical music, right? He, he plays, I don't remember the, the, what instrument he plays. He loves Chopin. Uh, he studies Chopin and, and, you know, he always wanted to be a musician. Of course, he started that in a previous incarnation. You cannot come out of nowhere and, and be since three years old, you want to be a musician. You have to have carried the baggage with you from somewhere, right? So this vocation is a consequence of what uh, he, he experienced in the previous incarnation and the necessity of continuing that because it's different from what we mentioned many times here. Mozart coming to a new reincarnation. He's already a genius of music. He doesn't need to come on another incarnation as a musician because he's going to not have the opportunity to learn different things. But until he reached the level of becoming a Mozart, he spent many incarnations evolving in music, right? In listening to music, learning music, in the study music until he reached the level. And again, those reincarnations may be somewhere else because I read that Mozart went back to some other world, right? Yes. Uh, it's one of the Spiritist Reviews. Talk oh, about. yeah. Yeah, I think uh, um, Jupiter, I believe. Jupiter, yeah. yes. Something in the Spiritist Review, right? Uh, so, again, uh, the progress can be, may have been in a different, uh, in the in different world, right? But, uh, but again, um, if we want to, uh, we are actually, uh, me and Luisa were talking about this, right? If you want to learn something, you have to focus. Because if you focus in too many things at, at the same time, you're never going to be good in any of those things, yeah. right? If you really need to, to, to learn and progress, you have to focus on what you want to achieve in this incarnation. It's, uh, the, someone says 10,000 hours of work, right? For you to become a a specialist in, in something. Uh, so, again, if you haven't completed that in a previous incarnation, why not come to a new incarnation and continue that work, right? Uh, so, that's what the spirits are telling here, uh, Kardec, right? Okay. 271. Yes. An errant spirit studies the various conditions of a physical life that will lead it to progress. However, how can it think that it will make progress by being born, for example, among cannibals? Those who are born among cannibals are not advanced spirits. They are spirits who are still at the cannibal level or possibly even lower. We know that cannibals are not at the bottom of the scale and that there are worlds in which degrees of cruelty <coughs> are found that have no equivalent on earth. The spirits of those worlds are therefore lower than the lowest of our world and being primitive is a step up for them. It would be the same situation if our cannibals had to carry out some profession obliging them to shed blood in a civilized community. If they have no higher goal it is because their moral inferiority does not allow them to grasp any higher degree of progress. A spirit can only advance gradually. It cannot clear the distance that separates barbarism from civilization in a single bound. Because of this inability, we see one of the reasons why reincarnation is necessary. Reincarnation is a product of God's justice because otherwise, what would become of the millions of human beings who die every day in the lowest depths of squalor 
if they had no means of arriving at higher states? Why would God deny them the favors granted to other human beings? Okay, I remember this is middle mid nineteenth century, right? So uh, the cannibals were uh, still existed more than they exist today. I, I think today there are still some uh, lost tribes that may be cannibals, but I, I'm not sure. Uh, but one the, the important thing here is you are always you always incarnate where you have the best uh, possibility of progress, right? The law, the natural law always places you uh, amongst those that will allow you some progress. So if you are coming from a primitive uh, world that, uh, you know, that like earth was 50,000 years ago, and you are going to incarnate here on earth, you have to incarnate amongst primitive spirits. That's the best opportunity. If you are placed in the middle of, of the so-called civilization, you have no condition of uh, of, of learning anything. You you know you are more or less you you just left the animal kingdom, right? In terms of progressing, you became an individual spirit. So all the you have no knowledge, and the moral uh, the moral qualities are non-existent also you're starting to develop everything so to develop everything you have to be around spirits that are at more or less at the same level now not all the spirits that are going to be there are at the same level because there is always more evolved spirits to help those uh group of spirits to evolve right like we have here when the study of history of humanity on earth we have spirits that came from more evolved worlds, like the exiles from Capella that helped uh, uh, human civilization to progress in Egypt, in, uh, in India, in uh, Persia. Uh, they came, they brought the knowledge. They came here because their moral advancement was not enough for them to stay where they were. And they came, they helped us. Some of them went back, some of them are still here. Uh, so, you imagine for them to come to incarnate on earth uh, 25,000 years ago from a place that was, let's say, it was what earth is today, you, your experience would be horrible, right? It would be so hard. Uh, you are used to all the comforts of what we have, civilization, and you are thrown in the middle of of barbarism, complete barbarism, right? That they don't know even how to, uh, they don't have the knowledge of agriculture, they don't have the knowledge of, uh, of anything. Uh, they just uh, try, basically they try to survive. That's all they do, right? Um, I was watching the other day a, a series on Netflix and it's uh, this 17 year old girl that goes to live in the middle of the jungle by herself, right? Um, it's very interesting because you think about that, right? The, the concern that she has during their, her days is how to gather food, how to protect herself from the environment and, uh, and, and the attacks of animals, right? So you basically go back to the primitive level, right? That we were... Yeah. It's, but that's a reality. This is a, a, a series, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. As a reality show that uh, challenges them to, yeah. But, you know, um, why would you want to go back there, right? Of course, there are people that want to go back to nature. They have a, a, a idyllic vision of uh, living in nature, which is not really the reality, but... Uh, but again, as we evolve, we want to uh, live in better conditions that we live today to allow us to progress. So uh, the, the ones that are born amongst the primitive people are primitive spirits. I got confused because then, so in that case, that you said about the girl, so what happens with her the condition? So is she she's learning. She's learning to survive. Maybe that's what's going to help her, right? She's learning to survive by herself. Um, why did she go there? Again, it's fiction, so 
but she went there because she was uh, uh, she's a 17 year old girl that was uh, unhappy with the environment that she lived right she was feeling empty so how to fill the emptiness she decided to go live in the in the jungle right she didn't decide she just start walking and ended up in the jungle um everything is a learning experience i'm just making a comparison what is the life of a spirit that uh, lives by itself in the middle of a jungle it's survival right it and uh, primitive spirits that's how they live the survival they live to procreate to eat and to protect themselves and those that are around them from external animals uh uh, uh how do you say uh, cat uh, catastrophes? Yeah, you know, you know weather-related catastrophes, right? Uh, diseases. So you, you end up uh, occupying a hundred percent of your time in trying to survive. Is it? Is it a learning experience? It's always a learning experience. Did she need to go that through that? It's a personal thing, right? Each, each one of us has their own needs, right? Maybe not. Maybe she didn't need to go through that. Maybe, I don't know, second season, she's going to go back to civilization and and with a different view. But uh, but again, uh, when, we talk, I, I, when I was watching it, I thought about the primitive uh, spirits because that's how they lived, right? So for those that uh, want us to go back to nature, to go back to nature it means also to try to survive by ourselves, right? Um, Although I'm really sure that she's not uh, growing morally. Because if she's, she's in this case, it's fiction, but uh, she's living by herself, so she doesn't have a community to, to deal with. She doesn't have other people around her to, you know, disagree with ideas with... Which is also, you know, what the spirits say about, uh, you know, the, the, those that isolate themselves from society, that they are not evolving. And it's, it's in reality, it's that, right? Unless you are a monk that uh, is a spiritual, the advanced, that by isolating yourself, you help uh, the environment of humanity. But this is one in a thousand monks that can do that. The majority of them cannot do that. So it's possible, yes. Can you help humanity by isolating yourself? Yes, but not at our level. Yeah. So she, you know, but again, we, we have our free will, right? Um, are we making better choices for ourselves than someone that is living in the jungle isolated by themselves? You know, it's an individual yeah okay okay one more because it's the same subject 272 can spirits be born among civilized people if they came right. from a world that is lower than earth or even if they were among the lowest members of the human race such as cannibals yes such spirits sometimes come into your world by trying to reach a degree that is too far above them. However, they are out of place among you because they have instincts and habits that clash with yours. These beings introduce cruelty and barbarism into civilization. For them, returning among cannibals is not a step down, but only resuming their proper place, and they may even gain by doing so. <clears throat> You, you raise your hand, so go ahead. Me? Yeah. Uh, uh, I want to understand what you, the comment you made about people wanting to go back to nature. What do you mean? There are, there are people that, uh, that say that uh, the only, only path for human civilization is to go back to nature, to leave every civilization behind and... Uh, Go live in nature. There are there's a small group of people that say that, right? And then some of them do that. Um, that was what I meant. I don't know if what is the the, the doubt there. You mean like 
like a um, group of people who claim we we need to give up the yeah. kind of lives the lifestyles we live yes move away from uh, cell phones from uh, cars move away live go back to live in the jungle because that was that was the true life so like living like um indigenous people no like this kind of society or not even that I'm i never talking, heard i never heard that no no i didn't and i'm not talking about indigenous people that were born there in the middle of it no i'm talking mm -hmm. about people that live in cities in civilization that live in in uh, in, in, in the uh, in in organized places and and don't feel that feel that we we need to leave everything behind and go back to to live in the in the jungle there are, you know, there. Are, I I heard some people, and some communities have done that. There are some communities living in a very, you know. Uh... Remember the guy in the seventies? Was it the guy from California? Uh, the Reverend Philip, help me out. The guy. It's about me? No. No, the guy from California that took the whole membership. Yeah, and, and, what, uh, uh, went to Guyana. Exactly, that's the one. What was his name? Yeah. So uh, he wanted to live in. He wanted to live in. Jim no Jones. Jim Jones. Reverend Jones. Jim Jones. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, but th this was a cult, right? This is different. He was yeah, a it's a cult, but it's, they wanted to live in in the nature. Yeah, right. but then he made everyone kill themselves. So you know. That was a result of a no, no, talking about it. The, 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 the... Yes. And uh, Fabio mentioned the movie Into the Wild, Fabio. And uh, yeah, I, when I was watching that series, I thought about the movie because this movie is based on a true story. Uh, again, based because we don't know exactly how the guy lived by himself there, but he ended up dying in the end, right? Uh, he waited there until, until it was too late for him to find help and he died trying to find help, trying to find help. And actually... The girl in this series that I watched mentions the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Into the wild. Yeah, it's a guy that decides to move away from civilization, live by himself. It's yes, it's a, it's a true story. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, he went there to live in the middle of uh, nowhere by himself. Was it, wasn't, that, wasn't that the case also of the, the, the Oklahoma, the Unabomba? You know, bomb or something like that. No, that gonna... That's the range of the individual. That's a different story. Yeah. And the bomber is uh, someone that. Uh... That's the range, yeah. But it's like you know, living in like the, the, the ideal of living in nature. That's not how it plays, you know. Yeah, but he was there living in nature, planning to to trying to kill to 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 do harm to civilization. And now really? we're talking here that people that do not want to cause harm, they just think that. It's better to live in the in the the wild by themselves. Um, yeah, like in California, back to the land movement, very common. I experienced it, I, but it wasn't removing every little thing, not removing cell phones or anything, but really living on the land and uh, being more self sufficient. I think was fairly successful. Yeah, but I and, and, and I yes, and I agree with you, Carol. That's different. That's uh, you know living yes, a simpler yeah. life. Living a simpler life, I right. think, exactly a choice. If you are yeah. living in society, a group of people that can can survive by themselves, you know, with agriculture, with a in, like the Amish, right? They live a simpler life there. They, Amish, the they Amish they're not. Right. Don't want to have any of the advancements of society, but um, are they progressing? Yes, they are. They're learning to to they live in their own life. But um, I'm I'm talking a little bit more of a uh, extremists that uh, want to leave everything behind and go live in the jungle. Well, the reality is uh. that <laughs> the reality is that man has never lived in nature. With Sorry. All, man has never lived in nature. They've always been left in, in a social context. Well, pre our primitive uh, human beings lived in nature, right? We learn agriculture. We learn agriculture 25,000 uh, years or 10,000 years uh, ago, right? So before that, we 
we are nomads living in, uh, in with what nature provided and moving from one place to another. Only when the exiles from Capella came that we started learning agriculture and starting uh, settling in places. That's uh, between 25,000 and 10,000 years ago. That's when we move from primitive uh, world to a world of uh, trials and atonements. Okay, um, our time is up. Uh, Fabio mentioned Thoreau and John Moore are better examples of people somewhat like that. I, I don't know the details, Fabio. I know the names, but I don't know the details. So I take your word for it. Thoreau and John Muir. Poets, yes, thanks. Both poets. Okay, um, so we're going to stop here. Next week we start on 270. Oh, actually, we had one question. Let's read the last question, Philip. Let's not finish before reading the next question. Let's start with 273. Yeah. Can a civilized person reincarnate as a form of atonement, as a primitive being? Mm -hmm. Yes. But that would depend on the kind of atonement that is due. Slave owners who have been cruel to their slaves might in turn become slaves and suffer the torment they once inflicted on others. People who held positions of authority at one time may in a new life be forced to obey those who formerly were their subordinates. Such an existence may be inflicted on them as atonement if they had abused their power, a good spirit may also choose an influential existence among the people of a lower race to hasten their advancement. In that case, such a reincarnation is a mission. Thanks. Um, so again, of course, we talked about this, right? You, you, you abused a, a class, you are born in that class. You have discrimination against uh, people, you are very likely to be born amongst them, right? So be careful who you hate because <laughs> exactly there. So, you know, here he talks about slave owners and uh, slaves right? in the middle of the 19th century was still present. Nowadays, uh, it's religion, it's race, it's, uh, it's uh, gender, all the things that uh, people persecute others. Uh, there's a good chance that that's what, where you're going to be born in the next incarnation, right? Religion, yeah. <laughs> soccer, <laughs> soccer teams, yes. So, Yankees and Mets, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Okay. But again, uh, the, the end here. Uh, a good spirit may also choose an influential existence among people of a lower race to hasten their advance, advancement or of a lower involvement. Uh, we mentioned this well, in being born amongst the cannibals, if you want to help them, right? And we are we have spirits around us that are there are many that come on a mission to help humanity evolve and we know some famous names but there are like mother teresa or gandhi but there are several non well-known names that also came to help us in, in a mission in a reincarnation as a mission san francis of assisi martin luther king and so on and so forth okay so next week we start on relationship beyond the grave. Looks like a, a horror movie title, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a title, Beyond the Grave. Relationships Beyond the Grave. <laughs> okay. Um, so this Saturday we have um, an event in, uh, in Atlanta that... Uh, I'm going to fly there tomorrow. Uh, it's mediumship in our present times. It's going to be shown by the United States Spiritist Federation uh, YouTube page. Start Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, it's going to be uh, 
some lectures by myself, Jussara, and Luis Lima, uh, and then a round table with the three of us talking about uh, mediumship, you know, the role of mediumship uh, in, uh, in, in communications with spirits. Well, that's what I'm going to talk about. Luis Lima is going to talk about the world of mediumship phenomena and different types of mediumship. And Jussara is going to talk about mediumship as a catalyst for spiritual awakening. So it's Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, and you can watch it on the United States Spiritist Federation YouTube page uh, starting at 10 a.m. Okay. Um, the book, uh, Monday is Columbus Day, but we're going to be open. Okay. We're, we're going to be here. Book club next week, chapter four of part two. This Sunday, second Sunday of the month, we're going to study the gospel according to spiritism. And um, I think that's it. Yes. Uh, Carol, can you do our final prayer? Yes, certainly. Thank you very much, John, for hosting. And Philip, thank you for reading. And thank you, everyone, for being here, present, and um, attentive. Infinite creator and supreme intelligence, we give thanks to be together for our studies of the Spirit's book, Book 2, Chapter 6, the topic being choice of trials. We need in reincarnation to progress and to test whether we have learned the lessons or trials. Some spirits that repeat their errors or vices may progress more slowly. Because of accumulated and repeated mistakes, they may reincarnate with mental or physical challenges. Some may choose a hard or painful life in order to advance through their experiences with a focus on success and happiness later. Sometimes we may be very bold and select more challenges than actually can be achieved. We will always progress even beyond our abilities to understand. A spirit advances gradually and the natural law places it in the best situation or environment in order to evolve. May we use our free will to do the optimum during the time we have while incarnating. We give thanks to the spiritual benefactors and the good spirits for guiding and inspiring us this evening. May we receive the love, light, and peace of Christ within us and for our loved ones, our teachers, our directors, our counselors, the mediums, the workers, and all participants. We pray now for inner peace and especially for world peace and for those who are suffering in the physical and spiritual worlds. We pray for our center SGNY and all spiritist centers throughout the world that they may grow, prosper, expand and be protected throughout the day and throughout the night. As we close, we humbly ask for safety and protection as we return to our family, friends, loved ones, and coworkers, may we go forth now as beacons of love, of light, of peace, of service, and charity, which is love in action. May peace and love prevail. So be it. <laughs>